I think sometimes when we think about Bitcoin media, we think like just talking about the technicals of Bitcoin, the number go up, we don't talk about the real human impact. Hey folks, Flo here with Blockchain North. We're at the 2024 Canadian Bitcoin Conference here in beautiful Montreal. I'm here with Julian Figueroa, who is with Get Based, but maybe you should introduce yourself in a couple of words. Yeah, um, I'm Julian. I do a lot of filmmaking around the Bitcoin space, moving a little bit more, hopefully just a little bit outside of the Bitcoin space, want to reach out to more like sovereign individuals, libertarians, freedom focused people, and try and get them into what we're doing here. So yeah, it's been, it's been a journey. How did you get involved in the world of Bitcoin? Oh man, um, you want the whole story or the, you want the, <laughs> the short, the short story? version? Okay, uh, short story is I bought it in order to buy vegetables online and then I didn't touch it for three years and then it came into my life randomly through Reddit and I ended up actually really getting into it through Ethereum and, and ended up shit coining my way into Bitcoin. Like I learned a lot about the industry, about immutability and the values of Bitcoin through these other coins. And eventually in 2019, 2020, I came around to being pretty much just focused on Bitcoin. I think it's the only one that really has a massive market impact that's bigger than we could ever really imagine. And I think the rest are sort of just like companies masquerading as something else. Mm. That's my opinion. I know you guys. I buy a lot of vegetables. I can buy a lot of vegetables with uh, the Bitcoin I have, yeah. <laughs> and how did you get into filmmaking for the Bitcoin space? I think Bitcoin, like, Bitcoin is almost this social movement. So after a while, like, you invest your money into it, you treat it like an investment, but then it's like, what's John F. Kennedy's things? Like, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. And it's sort of like that with Bitcoin. And my thing is I've been making films since I was, like, 10 years old, and I thought, well there's one thing in the Bitcoin space that's missing is, is storytelling. Like there's a lot of developers and engineers and podcasts, but there's not many people really telling the, the real world stories of what Bitcoin is doing mm. and what better way to do that one with, than with film. And so my mission over the last like three years has been to try and break out of this mold of what I think is kind of like standardized media for Bitcoin, the books, the podcasts, and try and just get out there and physically see how Bitcoin is impacting people in the real world and, and bring that to what I hope is a bigger audience because of it. Yeah, because you've traveled quite a bit over the last few years. A I've lot. Following you as Kinetic Finance, you know, get based. Maybe you could speak uh, briefly to why that transition, what does it mean? But then I'm also curious to understand, like, you know, you go to these countries, how do you choose these countries? Are you in any kind of way still focused on Canada or your, is your audience Canadian? So, yeah, part one, part two. Yeah, I think, like, when I... When I first had this idea of like, let's go make some documentaries about Bitcoin, it was where are the most visually interesting stories. And it kind of started with El Salvador. That was the first real documentary I did on Bitcoin. I flew down to El Salvador about two months after the uh, legal tender laws. Yeah. And I just opened my world, like my eyes to this beautiful like country that they had. The beaches, the mountains, the volcanoes. And being able to like show Bitcoin through that nature and through interviewing some of the people there and learning about the history and the culture of El Salvador gave it a really interesting spin. Because I think sometimes when we think about Bitcoin media, we think like just talking about the technicals of Bitcoin, the number go up. We don't talk about the real human impact. And so doing that documentary showed me this whole other side of how to tell a Bitcoin story, which is to tell it through the the lens of how it's really changed people's lives. Yeah. And so I did this little documentary in El Salvador and that's kind of kicked off this addiction of just going to all the different Bitcoin circular economies of which I think there's like 80 around the world right now mm. of, of people who have gone into towns or cities and have gotten merchants to accept it. And some of those merchants are living all of their day to day on Bitcoin. And so it's been El Salvador now, Guatemala, Costa Rica. Uh, we just did one in Peru I don't know where the next one will be, maybe Latin America again. Um, but I'd like to go to the other continents. It's weird because Africa, you would... Africa, maybe? Africa has, yeah. South Africa has a good uh, Bitcoin scene. Um, it, it seems to really have flourished in Latin America, and I can't quite figure out why there versus, I guess... the connectivity with North America? I think it might be something about that. I also think because... Because there's a lot of North Americans, Canadians or Americans who do go and start those communities. Like anyway, this is, for example... And Spanish is a pretty global language, right? So, right. like, you have to make sure that the applications and, and the spokespeople, like, they kind of all are on the same page, right? You start going to Asia, and there's, a, like, a myriad of different languages in Africa, and yeah. it's a little hard. I guess, like, Africa, you do have French as kind of, like, a common denominator yeah. with a lot of countries. And English. There. Yeah. Western. Um, but it is it is growing well in, in Africa. I think the, the challenge, though, is when I look at what's going on with Bitcoin adoption in Africa, 
people are still on like SMS, like texting phones. So wallet compatibility is really tough there. They have workarounds now where you can send Bitcoin via SMS through this thing called Mansion Cura. Um, but you go to Latin America and you'll go to these towns in the middle of nowhere, like we did in Peru. And these people have never opened up a bank account. They, they barter a lot of the time, Mm -hmm. but the one piece of technology they will have is they will have a smartphone. It'll have crack screen, everything. They'll have a smartphone and learning how to use a Bitcoin wallet is, you know, a couple hours and you're good to go. Are you wanting to ask you this question from the first time I saw uh, your documentaries, which is, you know, I guess, as I said, it seems like it's a lot of Westerners, North Americans, um, you know, Canadians in your case, who go to those communities. And I wonder how they react when, I mean, you're coming as a filmmaker, so I guess you come after the communities that has already been set up. Mm-hmm. But do you have a sense of how they react, how they welcome or maybe sometimes apprehend, you know, a bunch of Westerners, usually much richer than they are, in those communities where they face all these issues? And, you know, it, it, is that part of your story or what you've learned? I think it depends, right? Like... Uh, for example, in Guatemala, their adoption of Bitcoin was very much focused on like a tourism aspect. Okay. So there's an aspect where they were trying to basically use Bitcoin. Uh, they have like a miner there that's running off of used cooking oil. Mm. Uh, so that's kind of like a more communal project. But for the most part, the idea was that if all these restaurants and stuff start accepting it and we get like a you know big adoption in this one town, we can do something similar to Bitcoin Beach where tourists come just to check it out and spend Bitcoin down there and the savings kind of proliferate around the communities there. Um, so I think a lot of the circular economies, they have that element of trying to attract foreigners intentionally. And especially like you look at El Zante right now, that's like the Bitcoin Mecca, right? You know what all the guys that are involved in the circular economy projects are doing right now? If they're not just doing that, they're all in a real estate because yeah. that's where the puck is moving, right? So you have all these Bitcoiners that are getting tired of the West and you have these Bitcoin circular economies where you also have a bunch of other like-minded Bitcoiners. And so there is some concerns about like gentrification in these areas because you got a yeah. bunch of you know rich westerners coming down scooping up but there's always two sides to this right like there's a ton of economic opportunity that grows out of that like you you come down to a town like el zante and you still want to have like the luxuries of the north you want to have nice restaurants to go to you want to have people working and, and you forget that a lot of the time these areas ha- they don't have like we're lucky that we have three or five percent unemployment rates you go into some of these areas and it's like 20 percent unemployment rates mm. So at bare minimum, you have people there who are creating jobs. And from what I've seen, for the most part, these jobs are much better paying than the jobs they would get if these Westerners didn't come there. Mm-hmm. Uh, so there's a, there's a push and pull between exploitation, community involvement. There's always like ups and downs. But I think a lot of the people, when they see Westerners go somewhere, they only think of the negatives and the downsides. And I think you have to look at it a little bit more holistically. Who wants to? Yeah. And, uh, and of course, it's still very early. We hear this all the time in the Bitcoin community. And also, um, you know, I guess even within those those uh, communities, those countries, the Bitcoin community is still very small as well, right? Yeah. There's still a lot to uh, yeah. to see unravel. Um, I'm wondering as well, um, you know, so for so far, only El Salvador has made Bitcoin, uh, you know, legal. Ten, uh, and it has been, correct me if I'm wrong, two and a half years, something like that. Mm-hmm. Maybe we're three years in September. Um, so some naysayers may say, well, look, you know, nothing has happened in two years. No other countries is, has, has adopted it. Uh, perhaps they don't know about the Bitcoin cycles and, you know, mm. all the pushbacks that exist. But what is your sense of the countries you've been to, at least like Guatemala, like Costa Rica, uh, ever or, or even soon making Bitcoin legal? Well, the interesting, interesting thing about El Salvador, and I think some of the challenge that they've had is that a lot of the implementation of the Bitcoin stuff there has been from the top down. Uh-huh. I think initially Bitcoin Beach was a really like bottom up movement, but everything since then has been the government says, you know, McDonald's, Walmart has to accept it. Uh, you know, your visas can be paid for in Bitcoin. And I think that kind of stunted it a little bit, mm-hmm. but it's coming back around now where, you know, Bitcoin Beach and some of the people that have moved down there are really doing more ground up initiatives. But as soon as you leave El Salvador, and this is not like a harp against El Salvador, mm-hmm. um, all the other Bitcoin projects are from the bottom up they're all okay. really organic and um it usually starts with essentially it does usually require or it has been a foreigner entering these places but from there you kind of just find your local link right you find like a local family or, or person who really believes in what you're doing and they're the ones who spread it like wildfire to the rest of the community so in costa rica uh, the touch point for a lot of people there in their circular economy were these farmers markets okay. where you wouldn't, you know, necessarily like process credit cards and, and, you know, cash can be kind of like frustrating. 
But all of these people in the farmer's markets, they're very sovereign individuals. They grow their own food. They do all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And so it would make sense for them to also control their own wealth. So that learning gap wasn't as hard for them as, yeah. say, in other places where, you know, we're used to middlemen doing everything. So they're in that community, they're willing to go out there and learn how specific wallets work and learn about self-custody and all that. And I'd say of all the Bitcoin circular economies I've been to, that probably has like the most amount of adept Bitcoiners in it. Yeah. Um, because you have, you know, you have Francis from Bull Bitcoin down there, you have the whole Bitcoin jungle crew. And so they're really getting deep into the education there. And, you know, we spoke to, we spoke to merchants who like, you know, they have cold cards and all that stuff there and they're selling like their butter and their honey. That's not most of the Bitcoin circular economies, right? They're yeah. still mostly keeping it custodial wallets. Um, but yeah, it's like every community is sort of different. And that's the joy, honestly, in making these films is like, you learn a little bit about each community and the touch points and the struggles that each one kind of faces. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's, it's super interesting. And I, I like there's a, a site where you can actually see the growth and the trajectory growth of all these circular economies. 2019, it was just Bitcoin beach 2020. There were like maybe four others, 2021, there was like 20, 22, there's 40. And I think now we're up to like 80 or 90 different projects around the world. And Isabella, uh, who's my co-founder, she's starting one where she lives in Isla Mujeres in Mexico. And, mm -hmm. and now it's like, Beautiful place. because we've seen all these other ones, you can fast track the mistakes and, and like the learning lessons from all these other ones yeah. and really get the project moving. So it's cool. Is it's a very you going next? iterative process. Isla Mujeres, yeah. I've been down there. I've been but, down uh, there. In terms of making a, a movie. Well, see, it's just starting there, right? Yeah. Like uh, there's so many to do, honestly. Um, what are your plans? What is your strategy right now for the coming years? There, I could make infinite movies just about the circular economies, but I think... I, I really like to keep it fresh. And I think the the next narrative that Bitcoiners need to put some money behind to get the message out on is on mining. Um, I think the story of mining and the story of excess energy usage and the stories of different ways that we can utilize energy from flare to nuclear, yeah. it needs to be told better. There's a there's a really great cross-pollination between the the propaganda campaign against nuclear about how it's like so unsafe and everyone's dying because every single nuclear plant's Chernobyl 2.0 and the uh, propaganda campaign against Bitcoin mining, how it's destroying the planet. Those two forces need to team up and work together to explain the benefits of both Bitcoin mining and, you know, consistent energy to a community. Yeah. And so yeah, those are, examples, like yeah, there's some massive ones. Yeah, yeah. And, and like the flare gas community also has like a really net positive effect on the environment. And that story needs to be told. You got opportunity in Alberta. Yeah, exactly. So I'm looking forward to telling those stories. Um, those ones have a, a really big impact too on, on legislators because the circular economy stuff is great, but these things ultimately aren't really happening in Canada or the US. These are outside. And so you can show these to legislators and they can look at it and be like, okay, cool. Like Bitcoin is not just for money launderers, yeah. but the energy stuff happens very locally. And so you make films about that, that can have a real impact on the way that legislators approach and understand these subjects. Um, and that's really what I'm looking forward to doing a bit more of in uh, the coming year. Very cool. Where can people find you online? Uh, get Based, at Get Based TV on YouTube, on Twitter. It'll be at Get Based TV. We do not only the documentaries, we do shorts. We have original programming. Uh, we're going to be doing news soon. It's just going to be a flurry of stuff for both Bitcoiners, but other sovereign individuals looking to break out of the mainstream uh, web of news and learn more about freedom and, I don't know, becoming your own your own island in some way your own island yeah. very cool thank you very much thanks so much Flo. Take care.